Well, what we are doing today is coming from art class. We're working through uh, our art class series. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm not actually reteaching the lessons that you'll find on the DVD or, out, or art class downloads. Uh, what I'm doing is trying to augment what's in those lessons and give you something that, uh, that Pat Nepley, our, our master artist, uh, maybe didn't cover, didn't have time to cover, or maybe just a different angle on uh, what she was teaching. And this is from lesson 18, uh, and it's on proportion. And uh, just a quick summary, what uh, Pat covers in uh, her lesson is how to draw things so that they are in proper proportion to one another. Uh, so if you were doing this still life and you were, you know, you were sketching it out, uh, how would you make sure that the, the lamp and uh, I'm not even sure what kind of container that is, maybe that's a coffee container or something, uh, but all these different copper containers uh, that looks like it's for oil, maybe. Uh, but how do you make sure that all of these are in the proper proportion to one another? And then we've got the big uh, planter up here and the table. How do you keep everything the right size when you're drawing it? That's the subject of what uh, Pat teaches in uh, her lesson. Now, I'm going to take a different tack today, and I'm going to talk a little bit about proportion. But when we want to not draw in correct proportion because there are times now there are certain you know there are artists if you look at uh, artists like you know Picasso and some others uh, you know they draw kind of all over the place and things that aren't in the proportion they need to be there was a whole style called mannerism and one of the characteristics of a lot of that art was uh, like if they drew a figure it was uh, very elongated it didn't uh, have the same proportions. But there are some very practical times when you're drawing something when you will not want to draw in what we would call the proper proportion. And I'm going to cover a couple of those uh, before we uh, do our cartoon project today. So the first one is right here. Uh, now, this is, the, I'm working from photographs here, not drawings. But if you were to draw this picture, uh, you know, our mind knows that this fist is the same size as this fist. But if you're going to draw it correctly, you need to draw it out of proportion. You need to draw this fist much, much larger because he stretched it out and you're seeing it uh, from a different angle. And uh, this is called foreshortening. And it's something that uh, if, if you draw figures especially, uh, then uh, you're going to have to get a handle on there are going to be times when you're not going to want to draw uh, something in the what, what we would call the correct proportion. In other words, you wouldn't want to draw this hand the same size as this one because it would be much too small. So uh, that's, uh, that's something to keep in mind. And uh, remember, the very beginning of this class, our focus was how to draw what you see, not what you know or not what you think you see. What you think you see uh, or think you know, perhaps, is that this hand equals this hand. But we don't want to draw it that way. We want to draw it so this hand is bigger so you get the feel that he is stretching out his fist toward you. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, here's one where we have this huge train coming toward us. And in our heads, we know that all of these cars are the same size, pretty much. And if you go all the way back to the back here, you see this little thing here. And I'm not sure if that's another engine that's on the back or what. I, I don't have any other pictures of this train. But we know that this back here is probably identical in size to this up here. But we don't draw them that way because we're drawing in what's called perspective. Now, we will be learning about perspective later uh, in our class, uh, so I'm not going to really go into detail about that today. But this is another time when we don't draw in proper proportion, and we deliberately don't draw in proper proportion. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, this is called a pieta. Uh, pieta means pity, and uh, it's... A, uh, a pieta is a depiction of Mary, the mother of Jesus, holding Jesus after he was taken down from the cross. And many, many artists uh, throughout history have done pietas. Uh, this is probably 
the most famous, or at least one of the most famous, it was done by Michelangelo. And it's, of course, a sculpture, not a painting. But uh, if you look at this, and you look at it carefully and study it for a while, you'll notice that this is out of proportion. Uh, what's out of proportion? Well, Mary is out of proportion. If you look at her closely, you will see that uh, she is much, much too large uh, for how she actually would be. If, if those figures could actually be separated and, and stand up, uh, Mary would tower over Jesus. She'd be huge. Uh, so Michelangelo actually deliberately made Mary too big. Why? Well, because if he drew her real, or if he sculpted her realistically the way uh, she probably really was, uh, she the, the composition would have been totally off. She would have seemed much too small uh, to be holding Jesus. Uh, and if you look carefully, you'll notice that this composition has a triangular shape. Go up here and down and across. And that, that's very common uh, in, uh, in, in a lot of art is a triangular composition. So for the purposes of Michelangelo's composition, Mary ended up being a whole lot larger than she normally would. So she was made out of proportion, but it was for the purposes of the art. Okay, here's one more, and this one is my favorite one. I love dogs. Uh, this is a wonderful example of foreshortening, what we've already talked about. Uh, you know, you know, the dog's nose really isn't that big. Uh, but because of the angle that the camera is looking at the dog, then uh, you're seeing a, a very, very large nose uh, on the dog. Uh, so if you were to draw this, and this is actually what we're going to draw for our cartoon, uh, then, uh, yeah, you would draw the nose much, much bigger than in your head you know it really is. Uh, so that those are times when we deliberately draw out of proportion. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to have another little bit of fun. Uh, I'm going to move this picture over to my other monitor. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to draw that dog, but we're going to do it uh, by way of cartoon. Uh, because cartooning is another area where we deliberately will draw out of proportion. Uh, for example, if I'm drawing a face in a cartoon, uh, I'm going to, you know, I might draw a great big head like this, and I might make the ears really large, and, you know, throw a little bit of hair in here and kind of a little curl on top, maybe some really big bushy eyebrows. Let's give him some funny looking eyes. A little nose, and a tiny mouth. And then I'll erase that little bit of line there that shouldn't be there. You know, when you draw a cartoon, you think not in terms of proper proportion, you just think in terms of having fun. And you can have a whole lot of fun doing this. And that's why I point you to our cartooning DVD where you'll, you'll learn how to do quite a bit of stuff like that. Uh, but today we're going to cartoon that dog. So let me clear this layer. Uh, also, for starters, if, again, also, especially if you're new here with us, uh, the, I, I draw digitally, particularly when I'm teaching this class. And uh, I use a number of different programs, but this one is called ArtRage. And uh, you can actually check it out on ArtRage.com. And I'd encourage you, it's uh, right now almost 50% off. Uh, we don't get, uh, this isn't an affiliate arrangement. We don't get any kickback or anything from ArtRage. This is just software that I use, and I, it's, it's among the best digital art software uh, that I've ever found. Uh, you can get it for about $47 right now for the Windows version. Uh, if, you're, if you're working in, 
like an Android or uh, uh, on an iPad, uh, it's only five dollars. So uh, you know, check it out. Uh, that's again, we don't uh, we don't have any arrangement with Art Rage. I just like to recommend them when I can because I use it a lot. And if you're interested in getting into digital art, it's a good program to go with. Okay, so if you want to draw along with me, all you're going to need really is a pencil and paper. Uh, and I'm going to put the reference photo right up here so you can see it. Oops, let me move the puppy down and move my colors down here. Okay. And I'm going to make him a little bit bigger, or her. I don't know if it's a male or female dog. Okay, so you can draw along with me if you'd like. Um, again, I will be doing things a little differently because I am working, working digitally. But uh, if you have a pencil, you could pretty much follow along. And uh, I'm going to be using a lot of the techniques that we have already learned in previous classes. But, uh, you know, I think you'll pick them up pretty quick. So what I'm going to do is I, I've changed my settings here to a pencil. So I've got a pencil effect. And I'm going to change my eraser and get that. Okay, let's go back to my pencil. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on getting the, the general shape of the dog. Okay, so I'm going to tend to draw over here so you can see what I'm drawing. And I'm going to just get the top of his head or her head. Just draw kind of a nice oval. Again, because I'm cartooning, I'm not really worrying about specific detail here. I'm not trying to be um, precise. Uh, and that's another fun thing about cartooning. Okay, so then I'm going to come out. I've got ears on the side. I'm going to bring those ears down a little bit. Come over here. Okay, let's draw in the nose. Remember that nose is going to be a, a pretty big, pretty big thing here. Okay, now that may be a little bigger than I want, but and that's one of the things too. You know, I'm drawing and I'm saying we don't have to stay in proportion, but I do want to keep what I'm drawing in in a reasonable proportion. I don't want it unless I'm I'm just trying to really draw something strange. I want it to to look at least somewhat like uh, what it's supposed to. So. Okay, so we're going to bring the face out here. Come down to the bottom where we've got this kind of upside down V. And then you notice the bottom jaw just kind of makes a little thing here. And then there's a line right up the middle. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring that all the way up into the nose. And then I'm going to go on top of this line again, and I'm going to bring the nose down. Again, not trying to be perfect at all. Just trying to get a general feel for the dog's nose. Okay, and then here we've got kind of an almost a, a teardrop type shape. Okay, so I'm going to do that there. Come over about the same height. And I want to try to make these re relatively similar. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, now we have to put the eyes in. Now I'm going to draw the eyes roughly the same size, but I'm going to tweak them a, a little bit uh, as we go on just to show you how the eyes can make such a difference in anything like this. Okay, so I want to get these roughly how I'd like them to be. This is just my rough sketch. I'm going to bring the ears down a little bit. And I'm going to draw, we've got paws on either side here. I'm going to shrink this a bit, or move it at least. Okay, let me shrink that down. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little paw. And you notice roughly the paw is coming out at about the bottom of the ear. So again, not trying to draw a perfect paw here, just getting a shape down. I'm 
Okay, and then move this over. I'm going to do the same thing here. Also, you notice we have a little bit of the body here. So let's let's just put kind of a little bit of a body shape there. Okay, I'm going to move my colors down for a second. Okay, and then we're going to just bring that paw out kind of here. Okay, and I might shorten that paw just a little bit. My eraser, let's sh shorten that a little bit. Oops, wrong tool. Okay, back to pencil. Okay, so there we have our our basic sketch. Now, again, in digital work, you work in layers. So I've got my sketch down. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to ink. So I'm going to switch to a second layer so I can draw on top of my sketch. Now, if you're doing this with pencil and paper, uh, your first sketch where you're just roughing it in, you want to draw fairly lightly. Uh, but if you want to, once you, you're happy with your general shape that you've got, then you're going to come back and uh, you're going to work either with a darker pencil by pre pressing harder or using a softer pencil, uh, or you can use a, a marker. Uh, now, this is basically the equivalent of, an, uh, of, of a marker. So, uh, so I'm going to come in and let's, let me make sure on my samples here, I want black. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just start. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I come around. And this one doesn't quite match, so I'm going to... Uh, bring that down a little bit more. Remember, in cartooning, it's okay to kind of exaggerate the features. Okay, let's go back. All right, let's draw in that nose. Oops, I went to my pencil, not to my my pen. Okay, uh, draw that in, come around here, just like that. Now again, one thing I'm doing in my digital work that you may or may not need or want to do is I'm making sure that all of my lines connect. And the reason is I'm going to use a, a bucket tool here in a minute add color just so it's a little faster but if there are any gaps in uh, where I'm drawing then just like a hole in a bucket will cause a leak uh, a hole between the lines will cause a color leak and the entire page will turn maybe a color I don't want Okay, I'm doing really sad teardrop eyes here. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of come up here. And I want to make sure that that's good. Let's go get that body a little bit. Down. Get the paw. Need to get my colors out of the way here. And get my toolbox out of the way there. And okay, now I'm going to color in our puppy's eyes.
Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually turn off that sketch layer. And let's go back to what we were working on before. And I want to get rid of all my gaps. Make sure that everything is connected. I think that's all of them. We'll know soon enough if it isn't. Okay, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take a kind of a tan color. It looks like a golden retriever or a lab. I think it's a golden retriever. Now let's give her a gold color. And then I'm going to come back to my tools. I'm going to switch to a bucket tool. Now, at this point, if you're if you're working uh, along with me, then you would be going to colored pencils, you'd be going to crayons, uh, or you could just leave it black. And I, I haven't forgotten about the nose, incidentally. I am going to uh, finish that, but uh, I need to do a little bit of color here. So I'm going to go to my bucket tool, and I'm just going to tap in here. And that's going to give me some color. Now, if I had a lot more time to work with, I would uh, I would spend a lot more time on this. Uh, whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. Okay, so I'm going to just leave that as is. And I'm going to come back in here with a little different color. I'm going to go to the nose. Whoops, I made a mistake here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have to color those manually, which is no big deal. I will do that. Oops, but I want to go back to my black. I want the nostrils to be very black. And again, use a, a black marker would be good here, or if you have a soft pencil. And I'm going to come in with a lighter, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> got a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Maybe a little lighter color than that. Let's go with kind of a, a gray for that nose. Let me make that a little bigger so I can do this a little faster. And again, you can do this any number of ways. I shrink this down a little bit more here. And I'm working fast, so I'm not going into quite the detail that I normally would in terms of making sure all of the little color <coughs> color spots are taken out there. If you want to hang around with me for another 45 minutes, I'll make this perfect, but uh, you might not want to hang around that long. So I'm going to continue here. I'm going to put that line back in. Let's make that a little bit better there. Again, this is a cartoon, so we're not worrying too much about it being super perfect or accurate. I also forgot a little bit below. Let's put that in. And I'm going to pick up that color and then just come in here and color that. And I'm going to take my eraser and make that very, very small. I'm going to put just a little, little dot up there in the eyes. So we could have a little reflection. And there you have it, uh, our cartoon dog. Again, I went kind of quickly. Um, if I were taking more time, I would be a, a little bit more picky about some of the uh, other little issues here, but I wanted to give you an idea of how easy it is to just do something in the way of cartoon. 
Now, one other thing, because I said I was going to show you this, if the if if you want to make your animal look even more cute, then make the eyes bigger. Whoops, that's not. I've got it on eraser here. Let me get back to pen. Make sure I'm on black. Okay. The bigger the eyes, the cuter it looks. Okay, and it looks pretty sad. Let's, let's give him one little hair on top of his head or her head. Well, we are out of time. Uh, next week, we will continue on in our uh, series going through uh, art class. And next week, the lesson is on scale. And that will be a lot of fun, too. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you did this picture, be sure and send it to us. Send it to us either through info at seethelightshine.com. Just uh, say, attention, Jim. and uh, Or you can uh, post it to uh, or, or by a direct message to our uh, Facebook page. Uh, and uh, you can find that in the links. Um, thank you for watching. I'm Jim Pence with See the Light, and we will see you next week for Art Class Live.